morning, welcome along to Ireland Dem on Virgin Media One. It's nice to be back. Look who's back. Yeah, Delighted. So he flies in for one day and then goes off on his another long, long yeah, weekend. Long, long time to bank, bank holiday, holiday weekend. <laughs> and one man who knows all about bank holiday weekends and knows what to do with them. It just means I'm back home with the kids. Again. Alan was sitting there going, what is wrong with him? Why did he come in for one day? Could have had the biggest holiday ever. Anyway. It's not a holiday. <laughs> Looking after the children. <laughs> anyway. It is nice Thursday, week. April 27th. He didn't get any golf in at all. I hope your week is going well. Here is what is coming up on the show. New laws to protect the vulnerable. Older people are those with disabilities has come into force. We're going to be finding out about the new legislation that's coming up at quarter past seven. Uh, plus, she is the forensic psychologist and she's been three decades working with some of Britain's most violent women. This is fascinating. Later this hour, we're going to be talking to Anna Motz about her new book. It's called A Love That Kills. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And from wild energy prices to wild youths, Eurovision controversy. We're going to be taking a look at the stories making this morning's newspapers. Alan, he's over there shouting about holidays. How are you doing? Yeah, Long well, weekend coming? Listen, lads, could you believe this? This marks 40 years since Mary Black released her very first solo album. 40 years, and she's looking amazing. At 8.15, we're going to be chatting to the national treasure that is Mary Black about her life and her music. Now, to celebrate... you interviewing her back those 40 years I ago? I was. Well, I well, interviewed yeah. her on our very first first album, yeah, 40, 40 years, years ago. ago. 40 <laughs> years ago, right here. No, it wasn't in this studio, <laughs> somewhere else. Now, to celebrate Autism Awareness Month, Derek has a busy morning ahead. Derek, what can you tell us? Yes, Sal, we're live here in Rathgar in Dublin 6. And as most of you know by now, Autism Awareness, even Acceptance Month, has been up and running for the last couple of weeks. So this morning, we're going to be helping to shine a positive light on the wonderful spectrum, really, that is autism. We're going to be catching up with some of the team from asiam.ie, they published a recent report, as well as the family here, uh, local to Rathgar. So all that to come as we celebrate Autism Awareness Month. And lots of rain on the cards up from the south this Thursday, guys, as well. Spot flooding on the way. Too. But thankfully, it's payday. Is it payday soon? Oh, I hope so. I mean, you're doing such great work with autism, and then you drop it in that we've got a day full of rain. Thanks very much, Derek. I spent all day. I spent all day yesterday going, "Oh, the weather's going to be amazing in Kerry for the weekend." Hold on now, Derek. Don't be saying stuff like that. Anyway, like we'll it. find out more very shortly. It is now time to take a look over at the news with Anna Dahl. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Well, TD Nod Collins, who is at the centre of the land purchase controversy, is expected to make a statement in the Dáil later. Fianna Fáil's junior minister was previously a councillor in Limerick and part of a committee recommending the sale of public land back in 2007. While his wife bought the land a year later in an open market process, which concluded after he was no longer a councillor. Mr Collins has said at the time of that recommendation, neither he nor his wife had any beneficial interest in the, in the land. Efforts to evacuate 100 Irish people trapped in Sudan are continuing today. It comes as a three-day ceasefire allowing hundreds of people to leave the region is due to expire tonight. Evacuees have been landing at airports in many countries in Europe and elsewhere from Sudan. Those who can are getting out as the battle rages between the country's army and a paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces. So far, dozens of Irish citizens have left the region since evacuations began on Sunday. Tonishton Minister for Defence Michal Martin saying his department officials in Nairobi and Dublin are maintaining contact with registered Irish citizens. A series of short ceasefires over the past week had completely failed. This three-day ceasefire brokered by the US and Saudi Arabia came into effect earlier this week and has created lulls which have allowed hundreds of people to leave by air and land. The worst of the fighting has been seen in the capital Khartoum, Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands more have been injured. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. The inquest into the deaths of 48 young people in the Stardust nightclub fire on Valentine's night in 1981 will resume today. The coroner's court sitting at Dublin's Rotunda Hospital is due to hear further pen portraits from the loved ones of some of the victims. The inquest opened on Tuesday, 42 years after the fire in Artane in Dublin. 
Police in the U.S. say one of four escaped inmates in Mississippi died in a burning building last night. Dylan Arrington had been on the run since he and three other detainees escaped from Raymond Jail on Saturday night. There was an exchange of gunfire between the individual inside of the residence as well as law enforcement officers on the outside of the residence and somewhere along the way the residence was engulfed in flames. And finally for now, London businesses have been busy rolling out coronation-themed packages as hundreds of thousands from the UK and across the world are expected to visit the British capital. The coronation of King Charles on May 6th is expected to attract visitors from far and wide, excited to experience a piece of British history. However, it comes amid a cost-of-living crisis in the country that has stirred months of disruptive protests by workers seeking pay that keeps pace with decades high inflation. The security guards at Heathrow Airport are also planning to walk off the job on May 5th. It's threatening to travel to travel disruption for the coronation. For car insurance, van insurance or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless of course you've got money to burn. Thank you, Jaron. A very good morning. We're live here from Rathgar in Dublin 6 this Thursday morning. And coming up later on, we're going to be celebrating Autism Awareness Month uh, later on here in and around 8.45. So that's all to come right across this Thursday morning. Now, she's been busy on cameras uh, right across the week. Joe McKenna is with us once again as we pull back the curtains on your Thursday. And it's a mainly dry and settled start. You'd be glad to hear for the majority of the country, with the exception of northern areas through the northwest. Already plenty of rain coming coming down in those light to locally moderate southeasterly winds. Now, as we progress our way throughout this afternoon into the evening, keep an eye through the southwest because we do have that system developing, bringing with it rain, and that rain will drag its heels up across the country. So bit by bit, a lot of us really getting a taste of the wet stuff. And in fact, that rain will be heavy and persistent at times as those winds veer to the northwest. And in fact, we're looking at a risk of spot flooding out there today, surface water on road. So a big change from what we've seen over the last couple of days heavy rain on the cards uh, later on today. Top temps at 11 to 15 degrees. And tonight, as that rain pushes up across the country, in behind it, it willies off, winds uh, abating too, with a much more improved, a much more settled start as we feed our way into your Friday morning with values back to about 5 to 9 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a cloudy but settled Rathgar in Dublin. Six will be back again live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. It's time now to take a look at this morning's paper, starting with the Irish Times. Its headline, Ryan calls for major increase in size of state. Minister Eamon Ryan has said thousands of additional public servants are required because of the growth in the size of the economy, which has not been matched by increase in the size of the state. Bill shock facing customers after energy firms blunders. Over 11,000 Electric Ireland customers are being faced with bill shocks after it emerged that a blunder means they have not been asked for payment for months. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The examiner leads with justice delayed for abuse children. A European Union report has claimed that sexually abused children face waiting up to nine years before their case can get a court date. A review of the operation has found children will face undue delays. Rural Ireland is not turf fires and pig slayers. The Green Party's Rural Development spokeswoman, Roisin Garvey, has hit back at proposed new pro-agriculture party, saying, we are the only party that had rural development policies good for Ireland. That's the top story on the Daily Mail. The Mayor's front page, JK goes potty at Irish Euro Act. Author JK Rowling has blasted Ireland's Eurovision hopefuls wild youth for sacking creative director Ian Bannam over social media posts about a trans person. The Sun leads with pedo on COP Pro panel. John Hussey received five years this week for abusing Hannah Beresford in 2003 when she was just eight. But the Justice Department made the former solicitor a disciplinary board chair. The Star's front page, Kinahan mobster stepdad's Biden job. Guard are examining a potential security breach after the stepfather of the Kinahan cartel's top man in Ireland drove a bus in US President Joe Biden's uh, cavalcade on his four-day visit. 
And finally, the Herald goes with armed Gardaí raid Regency a suspect. The target of the raid is a close associate of Jerry Hutch and has been blamed by former associates in the Kinnan cartel for involvement in the Regency attack. I wonder how people feel about there being more civil servants all over the place. We need more civil servants. Is that a good thing? You can let us know. Let us know. Uh, also coming up, new laws to help vulnerable adults make key decisions has come into effect this week. This is um, for older people and people who might have an intellectual disability. Yeah, after the break, we're going to be discussing the new legislation on assisted decision making. Stay with us. Good morning, it's great to have you back. Now, the government has launched a new bill to help vulnerable older adults and those with intellectual disabilities who require assistance with decision making. Here to discuss what's involved in the new laws is Minister of State for Disabilities, Anne Rabbit, and Chair of the Law Society's Mental Health and Capacity Law Task Force, Anya Hines. There is, that is quite, quite the long one there, Anya. When I was looking at this and we saw this yesterday, I thought it was so interesting. So these laws to protect older vulnerable people from, for example, being moved into nursing homes against their wishes, having their money spent by relatives or having medical procedures they did not ask for. So you're sitting there going, oh my God, this all looks really good. Is this what this is going to help with, Anya? Um, I think it will. It's certainly the focus of the Act is to uh, presume a person has capacity regardless of their level of disability and to um, assist a person in maximising their decision-making capacity. Okay. It's about looking at a person's own wishes, their will and preferences. Okay. So, so we're looking at an old Act which is 150 years old. Mm. So how will this help people who need help with making decisions? with their personal, their property, our financial affairs? So first and foremost, at the moment in Ireland, we have 2,000 people that are in wardships. And over the next three years, all of their cases are going to be reviewed and where they will be given the support that they can have a co-decision maker, they can have assisted decision maker to actually, they have their will and preference, their voices heard to actually have autonomy over their affairs. The same way um, the health directive is part of it. So if you have a diminishing capacity, like somebody with Alzheimer's, for example, mm. they perhaps um, would have particular things that they would like to have set out. Their voice is listened to. They can actually be supported to have their will and preference actually looked after as you have just said, in relation to their financials, their health pieces, that they're covered. And is can this lead to very uh, unfortunate situations whereby you do have someone who is fighting for their capacity, say, to be at home, to be cared for by themselves, and you've got family members going, this can't happen, there's no way, like, we need to get this person into assisted living or something like that, and near the twain shall meet. Like, is, is there going to be issues with this? I don't think there's going to be issues. In, in the fact is that, say, for example, we go back to the person um, with, with Alzheimer's, for example, and their will and preference is, I would like to be cared for in my own home as, as my capacity or as my health deteriorates. That is my choice. Uh, and that's where uh, the decision support services mm. will actually operationalise mm. their will and preference to ensure that their wishes are carried out. So, so, you... so Anya, there's a three-tiered system at this as well? Yes. Then. So the first tier is assisted decision making. The second tier is co-decision making. And then the third tier is um, a circuit court application to appoint a decision making representative. So there's a graduated level so of support. So the first one is, sorry, say that again. Assisted decision making. Okay, so, so that can, is with? With another person yeah. and the decision is essentially made by the relevant person themselves with the assistance of another person. Then Of any other person? Of Yeah, the, someone they choose. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and then the second tier? Is co-decision making and that's a formal type of legal agreement which gets registered with the Director of Decision Support Services and that is joint decision making. Mm -hmm. With somebody. With somebody else. And the Again, third one is court appointed. Court appointed. Are we worried that this is, we already have a very backed up court system on you. Do we think that this is going to lead to a back up in court system like we were yeah, just seeing there it that was, it's taken nine months to? That, that's correct. And this is one of the uh, submissions that the Law Society Task Force, and well done for being able to get the whole name of the task force in there. It's a long one. This is one of the issues that the task force raised. 
we need needed extra judicial resources to make sure the already clogged lists wouldn't get clogged up with, it's anticipated there's going to be 1,200 applications. So we made that submission to the department and the department took it on board. I'm very pleased to say one of the first pieces that were, was commenced of the Amendment Act was the appointment of three new circuit court judges and we anticipate there'll be more circuit mm. court judges. So yes, it could place an extra burden on the court service, but it's a good burden. A, a good news story, yes. considering this is 150 years, this legislation, that to, to see a change like this is a real positive. The Lunacy Regulation Act was still in Ireland, Anne. Yeah, absolutely. So look, at, it, it's, a really, it's a really welcome um, development. Um, it, it has taken a lot of hard work with a lot of really good people to be involved to make this happen mm. from, from the legal side of this, um, and from the legislative side of this, but also from the NGOs, the, the, the likes of the Mental Health Commission. Uh, and actually, we now having a decision support services headed out by, by Onya Flynn. Th there has been a lot of work um, to get it to here to actually now mean that um, people can participate in, in government, in, in local councils mm. as well. It has opened that piece. Another piece that's embedded within it is, is going for persons with disability. We're, we're increasing it from 3% to 6% um, for people in the public sector, in employment. Mm. So we're actually setting a very high bar for ourselves. Yeah. We want mm. to double it in the next number of years, which is important yeah. as well. You mentioned local councils there, and there is what seems to be a, a sideshow going on in relation to your party and the government with Niall Collins, uh, junior minister, and when he was a local councillor on a parcel of land that was sold uh, to his wife at some stage. Um, this, is this something that is taking over and distracting everything from what's going on in the business of politics? And do you think that Niall Collins need to be more transparent and talk more about what happened in relation to this? Um, uh, it, it's certainly not taking over from the, the, what, the, what we do as politicians are, are, are delivering on the likes of this. This is front and centre, us doing legislation. Um, absolutely, the, the, it's unfortunate, the conversations that's going on at the moment. Niall's coming before the door later on today. He, he's going to make a statement on it. Do you uh, think he should answer questions? I think that he's going to... Well, the three party leaders don't feel that he needs to answer questions. I don't think he needs to. He actually has very clearly Why set out... Why do you not think he should answer questions? Because, listen, we've seen it in the past. And it looks... I, I mean, you could tell me, like, is he refusing to answer questions? That's why he won't do it? No, I don't think he is, Tommy, to be honest with you, refusing to answer questions. Um, but he, why won't he do he it He is then? actually... Because, I mean, this is, this is his second time... He's having to stand up in front of the doll yeah. in a matter of weeks, uh, which is, you know, it's a, when you're trying to do something good like this, yeah. it's an embarrassment. Look at, um, he, he's going to come before it, and, and I think we should give him the space to hear what he has to say well, later he'll on. He'll tell us what we yeah. all know. Let us. Let, I have to afford him the, the opportunity to come before the doll today um, and to, to, to actually lay out his statement. We haven't heard his voice. But what we've seen... <laughs> but we've been, asked to hear yeah, his voice. We, we've been we, waiting and he just we, hasn't come. We, he hasn't we, we come will anywhere. hear it later on today, but we've seen snippets all the way along. Let's hear it condensed today. From this now. is like last year with the Robert Troy situation and you're, you're talking about people kind of losing faith in the political system. And we're just going, can you please talk to us about what is going on? And this is running on and on and on and we're waiting to hear for from a politician yeah. and I hopefully today that actually he will bring real clarity to it hopefully we will have a clear understanding of it and hopefully today he will actually be able to put a full stop behind it for us and, to be able to move on and, and time will tell on that can I just ask you quickly as well more schemes have been adding to the housing for all is this pretty much an admission that the housing for all hasn't worked no absolutely not actually I think what we we see here is um, more schemes different layers going on but actually where you need where we're hearing clearly back we need to actually put more in in relation to the creek owner schemes in relation to the the 50,000 going to the 70 for the derelict it, it wasn't enough that, I think, is a positive, as opposed to not responding. We are responding to actually increasing... Another the billion. Huh? Another billion. Well, it's, it's actually, we will do anything at this stage to get the whole market moving. Uh, and if it means that... Does that mean 15, tackling vulture funds? Does that, that mean tackling investment funds coming in to the country so as that we can actually set our own market rates? I, I think everything is on the table. I don't think anything is off it. Uh, but, but these pieces we have heard from industry need to be responded to. Absolutely. OK, bless Well, you. listen, yeah, thank you very much uh, for that as well. And we look forward to Niall Collins' statement later on. But listen, it's great news uh, what you're doing with this.
new uh, legislation that is coming in. So we really do thank you both for coming in. Anya Hines, uh, Chair of the Law Society's Mental Health and Capacity Law Task Force, <laughs> and of course, Anne Rabbit, Minister of State Disability as well. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much for having us. So Welcome back. Now, the following interview contains subject matter of an adult nature viewer discretion is advised. Now, Anna Motz is one of Britain's leading forensic psychotherapists and has spent three decades working with very violent women. Anna joins us now because she's got a brand new book. It's called A Love That Kills that follows her work with some of the women she's worked with over the past three decades. Anna, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Can I first ask you exactly what a forensic psychologist is? Sure, that's a great question and good morning. Um, a forensic psychologist or psychotherapist is somebody who sees people who come into her contact through the criminal courts generally. So forensic really means from the courts. And so what I'll do is I'll meet people who've committed crimes and evaluate them, thinking about the kinds of psychological or mental illness factors that contributed. And then, and this is the part I love most, is I get to work with people to do therapy with individuals who've um, committed those crimes and to try and get an understanding of what led to them and, most importantly, how to prevent future crimes. And then, you just, why did you decide then to write the book? And the stories that you've included in this, why, why did you pick those women and those particular stories? That's a really important question. But I think what guided me was the fact that all the women I've seen, and these are hundreds over 30 years, um, have really, really important stories that society needs to know about. So it isn't just like they're evil, they're monsters, they're inhuman. It's about trying to look at the women's histories and look at the forces that actually led them both in society and in their own minds and in their intimate uh, circumstances and relationships to look at those particular women's experiences. Some of them are obviously very much disguised. Um, and some have features that I've seen universally in the women I've worked with. So long, long histories of trauma. And really, this isn't about justifying or excusing those crimes. It's just trying to really understand them again so that we can help the women, but most importantly, help society. And the women, you speak, you've got 11 cases in this dealing with mm -hmm. women. And I suppose when we think of incredibly violent crimes, mm -hmm. an awful lot of men's names come off the tongue, you know, from, from Dahmer to... Um, Peter, what's his name? But I can't get it off the tongue now. But you know, when you think about women, Peter you've got, Sutcliffe. thank you, Peter Sutcliffe. You've got <laughs> Rose West, Aileen Warnos, Myra Hindley. I suppose you don't think of an awful lot of of women who are these major um, violent criminals. Is that who you're talking about in this? Women who commit loads of crimes, or are they all like crimes of passion, as we consider with uh, female violence? <laughs> Sure. Well, what I'm talking about, so, some of the stories I tell are about women who've gone on to commit murder. Uh, they may not be high profile in the same way as Amara Hindley or an Eileen Wernos, who's a serial killer. Uh, others of the women have committed much more hidden private offences, crimes against children, sexual crimes, uh, tragically crimes of killing one's own children in the context of real delusion, mental illness. So what I'm trying to do is move from the extreme violence to something much more ordinary and hidden, kind of domestic violence by women, hidden uh, in the home, in private. So it's a real range of stories. It's a continuum. But my point really is that these aren't extraordinarily evil people. These are quite ordinary individuals who, I guess, sometimes through an extraordinary set of circumstances end up killing but much more importantly, it's those hidden crimes that are much more everyday. And exactly as you say, because women are seen as these like beautiful, idealized mother figures or very gentle, nurturing, all our stereotypes about women mean that women can get away with a lot of crimes without them ever being detected. And that's our social, um, that's our societal kind of blindness to female violence. That's a real reason why I wanted to write this book, to bring it out of the shadows and to also help those women who are struggling with violent thoughts to come forward and say, look, I'm, I'm having these awful yeah. uh, 
fantasies and ideas. Please help me. I don't want to act on them. And, and you do help people and you have had breakthroughs with obviously many of the people that you worked with. But you, you discuss um, one of the cases is Amber. Can you tell us about Amber and that you sort of, you didn't get a breakthrough there? Absolutely. So Amber was a woman who had committed sexual offences against children and these uh, were both creating images, indecent images of children, distributing them through her boyfriend, who was also later charged with possession and acts of possession of um, indecent images and acts of uh, sexual yeah, violence against children. She herself was not fully charged with indecent assault, but she was definitely involved in um, sexual offences. <laughs> So clearly, this is a really important case because here I am a, at that time, a young, relatively inexperienced uh, psychotherapist working with someone I'd never encountered before, a woman who is gratified through sexual uh, encounters with and images of children. For, for a woman who commit this kind of crime, there's a tremendous stigma and shame. And um, I think that's really important. And that happened in this therapy, because although I gave her a really good trial run to see, could we uncover what had led to this? Could we ensure this wouldn't happen again? Her sense of shame and um, horror, I think, at being seen as a female sex offender, as a sex offender at all, meant that she shut down and she denied it and she attributed a lot of blame to her partner. Although eventually we could get to some of the roots of her uh, sexual deviance, really, and her trauma, ultimately, it was a no-go area because it was just too horrific for her to admit what she had, what she had done. Wow. So sadly, you know, I felt I have to include that, that kind of description of my work because I'm not, much as I'd love to be able to help everyone redeem themselves and change fundamentally, in this case, we only got a tiny, tiny, a uh, glimmer of hope, and then she um, she shut, shut down. Uh, wow, it's that's horrific. Mm. I'm am just wondering with all of this, Anna. What and obviously women do commit incredibly violent crimes. We mm. know that. Why don't they commit them? Why don't they act on them as much as men do? Well, now there's a kind of two part answer to that. Firstly, some of the crimes I'm talking about, like child abuse or even Munchausen syndrome by proxy as it's known now, fabricated or uh, induced illness, that's when a mother or carer might be making her child ill and then presenting that child to hospital for unnecessary treatment or interventions, uh, secretly poisoning the child, oh, harming them wow. to get kind of medical attention, or just more ordinary child abuse. Those crimes, like I say, may not be detected. So we don't, and sexual crimes, particularly uh, victims of female sexual offence, are very loath sometimes, particularly if they're children, to come forward because no one will believe them. And what if the offender is your mother, aunt, sister, grandma? Um, so there's an important point to bear in mind, which is that all we know is the official crime statistics or the reports by victims who aren't necessarily uh, making this a criminal offence. So violent acts may be going on at a much greater rate, certainly in the home, than is criminalised. But also there's a real societal taboo, isn't there, against women acting violently. And so my point really is that you won't see women in public acting violently. Uh, the, a lot of the violence will be hidden and in the home. But it's absolutely true that in prisons, most of the violent offenders are males. Shockingly, there are some extremely violent uh, women and they may be detected in these high profile cases and then they'll be hated because, you know, this isn't meant to happen. Yeah. Women aren't meant to do this. Well, Anna, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Your book is A Love Hi, That sir. Kills and it is a fascinating read. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Back with you on Ireland AM very shortly. Good morning. Yes, we are sitting in front of the papers, which means only one thing. It's time to look through them with our man this morning, Lorcan Nine from the Communications Clinic. Good morning. He did that like it was Bosco. We were going through the red door. I love that. Yeah. That was brilliant. A uh, story number one, which was is a bit of shock. So energy suppliers have been 
pretty much either taking double payments out of some people's accounts or not taking money out of people's payments. Just a couple of blunders. Yeah, so 11,000 electric, electric Ireland customers um, were taken. There was no payment taken out for an eight amount of time for three or four months. So now obviously no payment would be taken out, which means they would then ultimately have a big payment being taken out, which is a big impact. And then Take a big on, whammy out of your account. On, on, on but are Electric gosh. Ireland saying that they are going to, we're just taking all of that in one go? Yeah, yeah. So that was an issue what was going to happen. And then I look, as obviously it's been corrected now because it's been identified. And then on the Borgash side, they had actually taken double payments um, yesterday. So for 11,000 customers, they were accidentally direct debited twice, um, which means obviously, look, for some people, it's just a bit of an annoyance. But there will be some people who will be looking at their account and it will, it will have emptied it out. They we'll may have had enough money to do it. Could knock them into overdraft. Could knock them into an overdraft. What? Could yeah. knock them out of their overdraft. Could mean that there is a week where they are now while they're waiting for returns, etc., for it to come in. So That's look, a bit it, I find shocking. Exactly. Yeah. If you had, like, say, a grand set aside yeah. or 500 or 300, whatever, and a double comes out. Yeah. And look, this is the issue with it being on, on a direct debit where they will say, well, look, we sent you the bill and or look, it was maybe perhaps, yeah. you know, you, you should have noticed that the payment wasn't no, coming out. No, but that's the thing. People did complain mm. going, I have not received a bill. And they didn't do anything about it. There's one customer saying, I sent in a complaint on March 20th yeah. saying I haven't received a bill since the 3rd of January yeah. and nothing has happened until now. Yeah. So look, they did know about it. Someone knew about it. Yeah, And it does happen and I do think it's a big issue and I, it has consistent actually personal experience on it. It's not going into it, but I closed off an account with an electricity provider. The last bill was wrong and it was a 7 800% increase and they automatically direct debited it from me. And then obviously you notice. And look, I'm still dealing with it and I've been able to deal with it, but there'd be a huge amount of people who would be absolutely ruined by that um, um, and so look there obviously look these these issues will be dealt with because people identify them yeah. they work through but there is this constant drip feed of stories where the customer service probably isn't yeah. where it needs to be where then the regulator does have to step in and like 11,000 people on both sides it's, it's a yeah. lot of people it's, it's a small percentage of the customer base but it's a lot of people when it comes to providers I'm wondering if people might know if you've tried to complain about something whether you have to threaten to go public or to the commissioner the regulating commissioner in order mm. to get something done because I know someone who tried it for ages and went I'm going to go they had to do it on Twitter to get anything to happen, it let us know. 0896 111 Mentioning one. one bit of good news that SSE mm. Airtricity is set to return 8.6 million to householders uh, after committing to forego yeah. profit. So we'd like to see more stories like that. Let's move on to story number two, a wild story involving wild youth. Uh, and now JK Rowling has got involved. Consistently, I suppose, whenever anything about the transgender community comes up, J.K. Rowling decides that she has to. Do be you think she's a she Google alert or something on her Twitter? I think she I absolutely. I'm most. not. No, I, I. know you think that's a joke. I think she does. I think it's now yeah. all she cares about and has to be consumed by it. And this mm -hmm. is like it's a community that is just consistently under attack. They're under attack in such a massive way everywhere, a massive way in America. And to feel that you need to find every single opportunity you can to just hit and hit and hit them two percent of the population is incredibly frustrating. And I think when you look at J.K. Rowling, she created two. Despicable characters that are probably literally interesting. One was a one was a journalist who took individual elements of a story, stripped the context of it, and used it to make people's lives a nightmare, which was Rita Skeeter. And the other one was she had Dolores Umbridge, who was a person in power who punched down consistently and took joy from it. And in this story, characters she's decided she has decided to embody oh, both of those. Who are these people? Yeah, yeah. Characters, characters from Harry, characters yeah. from Harry Potter. Harry. So she has decided to embody both of those people uh, in this story where Wild Duke decided to cut ties with Ian Bannon because of transphobic tweets that he put out. She took one of those tweets and made it the entire story wh while ignoring tweets like talking about Dylan um, Mulvaney, who is a, 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 a transgender woman in the States, who was yep. very, very high profile, and saying things like, that's because he's not a woman. Yep. So misgendering on purpose of somebody who was a really, really high profile transaction. And so she's misleading tweet, the story. She did tweet basically about Wild Youth's statement of so-called kindness and inclusivity is preening self-satisfied misogyny. And she added Wild Youth to make yep. sure that their mentions were destroyed, by the yep. way. They're getting nothing <clears> but abuse from this virulent, um, hateful, hateful community online. Um, I think it's an absolute Let's disgrace. Let's move on Let's move to on. a guy in... Whew, Donegal, someone happy. Donegal people will make but us happy today. Happy. Hopefully this will make him happy. Yeah. He will make us happy. It's a, a throwback to the misconnection kind of letters that used to be sent into new, newspapers. I love those. Done on, on, on Reddit. You know, the kind of, I saw you on yeah. the bus and you were sparkling and beautiful and I didn't get a chance to talk <laughs> to you and therefore I would love to. He's doing this on Reddit, a 15-year-old Donegal teenager who said, basically you were at the Pulse Teenage Disco with your friends and you happened to catch my attention. It was the Easter special <laughs> from two weeks ago in Letter Kenny and she had liked 
light green hair, glasses, and I believe parachute pants. Um, and I mean, so, how narrow is that? Who is going to be going to Letterkenny with green hair and glasses? Yeah. Go, so the know. person will be identified. Now, you know, it's. In, in the old days, it was just, will, will, you, will you ship my friend? Will you not ship it my was. friend? Will you Listen, ship me instead? Do you know? But we, this is a nicer way of doing it. We want to hear your teenage disco stories, meeting someone, trying to find someone, the, everything. 0896 111 We'd love to hear from you. Lorcan Lyon, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us Lydia. today. Plenty more Ireland M coming up after the break. Good morning, welcome back to Ireland AM. Here's what's coming up. She has been a dominant presence in Irish music for decades, the one, the only. Mary Black is gonna be here in studio to chat about hitting the road for her 40th anniversary tour. And I'm just gonna try not to sing oh, Katie exciting, into her yeah. face, you know what I mean? After nine, also we've got a guest who's best known as Derry Girl's Ma Mary. We're gonna be chatting to Tara Lynn O'Neill about her Virgin Media series for book lovers. Look forward to that as well. And protein powders are increasing in popularity as a way to maintain and build muscle. But are they healthy? We're gonna be looking into the pros and cons with nutritionist Sinead Brown. Bradbury very late. Well, you know, I always remember that, like the lads on creatinine, was it? Sorry? Cre creatine. Creatine. Creatine, yeah. But no, protein's different. Creatine's a different thing. Oh, that's thing a completely different well. thing. Absolutely. But a man who is, who is all about this now that he's hitting the pool, swimming flat out, Alan, are you on the protein powder? No, at the creatine, like Carl used to be on it all the time. But like really? the, the protein, isn't that, are they not the same? No. I don't, it's to I don't think repair so. muscle after you, um, yeah, after yeah. you worked out. Now, look at who's here. Look at the muscles on this. <laughs> Our favourite Italian. <laughs> The <laughs> 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 Alberto okay. Rossi, what are you serving up for us? Well, we are serving involtini di manzo, so they are like beef rolls, you know? You take a nice little piece of meat and then you stuff it and you roll it and then you cook it in the oven. And what are you so stuffing it with? Uh, we have taleggio, that is like a creamy cheese from Italy, then there is uh, a little bit of uh, breadcrumbs, garlic, mm. onion, so nice, oh, nice food, you know? Oh, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, come back. Breakfast champions. Oh, you yeah. came back. This this is the only reason he came back for one day. It was has for, to be. Was for Alberto's cooking. Now, Derek is live from Rockgar in Dublin this morning. What's happening there, Derek? Yes, uh, live here in Rockgar, Dublin 6, right across the morning. In fact, we're here to tie in with Autism Acceptance Month, which has been ongoing for the last couple of weeks. We're actually gate crashing a coffee morning here this morning. A big hello to everyone in Tribe. <laughs> we have a big gang. We're going to be catching up with some of the team, some of the crew from As I Am, as well as a local family here living with autism. And guys, look at this for a spread. A big shout out for everyone in Tribe. <laughs> Back to studio. Talk about time. It was like it was planned. Uh, Oh, yeah, and no, smooth. It was just automatic, automatically there. Looking forward to chatting to Derek about that a little bit later on. Oh, a lot of texts coming yeah, through. Yeah, so the story on the energy firm. So some of them, you, um, they they took double so, payments yesterday. So Borgosh Energy took double payments. Yeah. Uh, Electric Correct. Ireland uh, has taken 11,000 customers have gone for months without paying. Paying a bill. And then would be expected then after, say, three, four, five months, whatever else, they just take it all out. But in stop. fairness, if I'm sure, because this has been said time and time again, if you contact your electricity supplier and, and start a conversation about a payment scheme, they, they have to would, how, accept it, like Gina how, has said it here. I didn't receive a bill for six months, go on. No, because you're saying contact them and then you will be able to go, OK, I can't pay this big lump sum if mm. we can sort this out. But Gina... Yeah, but I mean, I, if Gina, Gina says here, I didn't, I didn't receive a bill for six months from an electricity company despite ringing, emailing and sending them the meter readings regularly. I finally received a bill for thousands of euro. I'm at my wit's end as I cannot afford to pay that much up front. But so, the she... government has even said if you start a conversation with your electricity firm, they cannot demand the money. They, because once but she you... did it beforehand. Yeah, but like, I mean... What? No, I but mean, just the undue Well, Gina, stress. can you get back in touch with us and let us know what you did? But the because... undue stress, like she told oh, them, I know you the send stress me a Bill, and now she's there, stressed, Gina and she had has to, to go through this payment plan. Sit on hold on the phone for about an hour and a half, oh, yeah, waiting, I know, to, get waiting to, to get through to someone. Um, yeah, well, listen, do Gina. <laughs> Let, get I, in touch so Alan can find out what exactly happened. But I just think, I just think a friend of mine had an issue with the bill recently and went and talked to them again and again and again and again. It was only until they threatened to either go public on Twitter or, and then said, I'm going to the ombudsman over, over this. Did they get something happening? Well, you that's either disgraceful. Have to Who are they dealing with? 
they were dealing. No, we should. We should. I'm, sort of, I'm, it's their I'm issue. Oh, yeah. It's their um, issue. It is. Well, this, so this is both Electric Ireland customers uh, on the billing issue there, and you've board gosh as well have both admitted to it. And yeah. it's pretty much twenty two thousand people have been affected with this. Let's move on to another story. So a Donegal teenager is harnessing the power of the internet to track down a potential misconnection on a recent night out. So he was out in Letterkenny, didn't go over and say hello, and has got it because he felt that if he had gone over and said hello, that there might be an opportunity for a connection. She had light green hair and glasses and believe parachute pants. And Louise has said, I remember discos back in the early 2000s where boys and girls would stand at opposite ends of the room until somebody got the courage to cross the room and ask for a dance. You'd never see them now. You don't, and, and because when it. you go out, they, but it was they're passing always the, It was crossing the Rubicon. You had to send someone over going, will you dance with my friend? Oh, but yeah. Do you think nowadays that just doesn't happen? Like this young, young fella obviously saw this girl in Letterkenny. Did, did it, they not go over and say hello? It does anyway? happen. My nephew was at a disco recently and I was like, what's going on? And his parents were like chaperones. They were like, the boys are on one side, the girls are all on the other side. It's still the exact same thing, I think. Um, disco jeans. Do you remember this, Mirren? The horrendous fashion back in the rugby club disco days. <laughs> you remember the, the X work jeans? jeans? X work jeans. What's our X work jeans? They were show blogs and X works. You remember X works? Baggy like jeans went over the top of the shoes the whole hour. Oh yeah, and they had very these, cool. These Baggy trousers so like cool. like crisscross. Yeah. Disco yeah. memories, or if you've chaperoned, say your teenagers' disco, is it still boys on one side, girls the other? Oh eight nine six. Uh, Oh, wait, nine, six. And triple help, one, triple, triple one, triple one. And help I mean, a young fella out up in Donegal as well. Ah, uh, yeah, if you if you are that person with the green hair, take get him out of his mid. Why didn't he just go over and He's talk on Reddit. To it? Go on. There you go. go on. Now, this year is a very special year for the one and only Mary Black. It marks the 40th anniversary of the release of our very first solo album. And she goes to join us in studio next. We'll see you in a few minutes. Staying with us now. Her career spans over 40 years, and I could have been there for your very first interview when you launched your first album way back 40 years ago, Mary Black. They've been slagging me all morning. I could have actually been there. I know, you were just a young fella. You were, still you, you were only a young one. There we go, exactly. There you go. There so we that's go. why we're here. We're here to Mary, talk about 40 years of, since Mary, Black. of Mary Black. Can we do? We were in studio a second ago chatting as Tommy was slagging Alan. And Mary's like, what is that? It was you singing. Oh, it was right, like, okay. that's you. Let's take, let's take an all listen to Mary Black this morning. Better times, better times will come. Oh, better times, better times will come. Living on your western shore, so summer sunsets are. Actually, get chills when you hear that. Good morning, Mary Black. How Good are you? To you too. I'm not not up this early usually. No. <laughs> <laughs> this early, I'm ready to go. Do ready you know to what go. I love there, Mary. You're actually sitting there and you were swaying along and singing yeah. along to that. Sometimes when we've guests in and they st we start playing mm. videos of them, they're like, "Oh no, put it away." You were looking, loving that yeah, and right. reminiscing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's funny that that first song was written by a great friend of mine, Janice Ian, and she asked me would I record it, and I I, I did just. During lockdown, that was the whole. Everybody was in their yeah. In their this is better yeah. times, yeah. yeah. Yeah, better times. But of course, the other ones, of course, they go back. But you saw everybody John Sheehan them. there as well. Who? You saw there. You were was John Sheehan in the video? Oh yes, yes there. Yeah, yeah. Like you've worked with so many of the greats over yeah. the years. Like we're celebrating your fortieth year of the release of your very first album. The people that you've worked with. It just must have been a yeah. joy. And I know some of them are gone now, but yeah. there's so many still going and you're still oh, meeting yeah. up with so many no, people. No, I, I, to be honest, I'm enjoying it more now than I ever did. Probably because I know it's not going to last forever. You know, when you're kind of in it, right in it, you're kind of, you know, wishing your time away in a way. You know, I don't know, it's just now, it, it, it's almost like, um, you know, 
I suppose it's a feeling that it's going to, it is going to end, you know, at some stage. I mean, you know, I can't well, go on it's forever. 40 years <laughs> later, <laughs> you're still, like, I'm sure 20 years ago you were saying, ah, it won't last much longer now. I did. And here you're I going remember, 40 years. I actually remember saying to Joe, I wonder, will I be still singing at 40? Thinking 40 was old. Oh, Hello? yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you're in your 20s, you think you'll never get to 40. And that's coming back to the hearing thing too, because um, I, I had a... I'm here because of Specsavers and it's a uh, hearing health week. Yeah. And I, in the last few years, have had difficulty with my hearing. And um, I, I actually, it, uh, there's obviously damage from being on stage and loud, loud uh, monitors and different things down through the years, you know. Yeah. But then I had an illness which happened about six or seven years ago, which it was called Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which was shingles in the ear basically, but very dangerous. And also, I lost a lot of my hearing this year. So um, I kind of came on to talk about, about that, about hearing loss and about people being, I suppose, in denial about hearing loss. They get to a certain age. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and everybody has hearing loss as time goes on. Yep. That's normal. Uh, obviously, I had a bit more because of this thing that I had. And um, But there are loads of people out there who might feel that it's the, you know, the, they're not old enough to wear Because they'll get the aids. glasses. Do you know, people yeah. will go for the oh, glasses. The when glasses. it comes to a hearing aid, Absolutely. and I remember, like, trying to get my granny to wear yeah. a hearing aid was a nightmare for people. You see, hearing aids back in the day were a nightmare. Oh, yeah, point. they were Good these point. huge <laughs> things. Yeah. Be whistling, you'd yeah. Be, my father had them and a box in his back pocket. He hated it. But so discreet now. I mean, technology has come on so, so much. But and did you, were you fearful then because yeah. of that, that I won't be able to hear the band, oh, I won't be able, I, the very, career is gone nearly. Well, it's very frightening when you're hearing, because I remember, you know, when I would be lying on my good ear in bed and Joe would say something to me, I, co I couldn't hear this ear. I, I say, what the hell is going on? So you have to, you know, I think people have to embrace the fact that if they have hearing loss, that there are ways around it. I can't believe it now with these hearing... I've hearing aids in now. Yeah. And you wouldn't even notice them. You oh, don't do even, you? No, you don't, yeah. you don't even see them. It, but the thing about it is, like, there's, it's so clever now. Like, say if I'm sitting in a car, it'll cut back the sound of the engine so that I can hear when people are talking, I can hear clearly. I mean, it's just unreal. Yeah, my it? friend has them as well, and it's connected to Bluetooth to his phone and oh, everything yeah. like that. And everything, everything, comes in. everything comes into the hearing the aids. Phone yeah. rings, like and I go click, yeah. and I'm chatting away, you know, and no one knows. People <laughs> think I'm talking to myself. And is this, <laughs> and is this when Joe? Is this when Joe asks you the big things, Mary? I'm going to buy a new car. It's when you're sleeping on your good ear, uh, yeah. and you're, you've got the bad ear <laughs> and the hearing. Can't hear you now. Can't hear you. Joe asks all the big questions. Then is I, it? Uh, my mother used to say about my father, "Oh, he hears what he wants to hear." Oh yeah, they always do. I can imagine. But because then you had, because I can't imagine for a singer when you're like thinking my pitch, my yeah. band, what's going on. Is that why you feel more free now as well? Absolutely. You have to be able to wow. hear yourself to, to communicate. And I communicate all the time on stage. Yeah. Mm. So like, it's hugely important. And I also want to say to young people and, uh, you know, we all, nobody thinks they're going to get old eventually. And I'm not that old, I know I'm not, I, and I feel great. But, you know, you have to protect your ears, that's another thing. Loud music with uh, monitors. People need to go and keep an eye on their, on their hearing health because it's so important to every aspect of your life. It really, really is, you know? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, can there hear we go. We just I just think I've done that. Is this in spec savers where you just go in and you listen to a thing and you press it when you hear the noise? Yeah. And yeah, it's very yeah. simple. It's oh, it's not. It's, no, but it is. It's it's sorry, it's, there it's, was a medical test. Of course, you took I it. Took. I'm just kind of looking there. If there's a medical test, you'll take it. <laughs> Let's talk about this 40th anniversary yes, of your okay, very okay, first okay. album. Yeah, That's, the first album back in 1983. I was uh, I was only a baby. You were a baby. Yeah. And have I seen it before that? Now, I mean, the Black Family, oh, the family had been, yeah. you know, all that. And I had recorded, um, I'd recorded a few little things before, but my first solo album was 1983. And uh, it, it was it was really well received. I was amazed, you know. How many albums have you had since then? The charts, huh? How many albums have you had since then? Oh, solo albums, I've had maybe 13. 13. But loads of, you know, uh, you know, I have this compilation albums. Yeah, and, and you've been on, you've been and on albums. That. I don't count yeah. them. You've been on other albums. Okay. And like with the sold out gigs now, you must be so thrilled. So like people, are the people like from 40 years ago, like they're still going to the gigs, they're bringing their kids. Do you see that now? Yeah, is well, there, what what's I, the audience like now? The audience is very mixed. Like yeah. it's my age and then it's a lot of kind of, I think a bunches of girls are coming now. They're kind of like in I their early 30s. I go to your gigs 30s. and yeah. there are people they're in their 20s. They're along, bright blue rose. Stuff. It's like they were brought up yeah. on their parents' music and they probably shunned it in their teens and early 20s. <laughs> 
you know, embracing yeah, it now. And now, now it's mm. like bringing them back to their youth, back their, you know, their childhood. And they know all the words because I think when you're a kid, you soak up music. Mm. Just, yeah. I know words of songs that amazes me, for, like just something I would have heard on the radio. So you do, you soak up all that, you know, music and, and, and lyrics and all that. And it becomes important to you as, a, as an adult later yeah. on and brings back memories as smells do and yeah. music always brings you back to some places. And uh, yeah, it's been great. They're not all sold out later in the year now. We've got some um, gigs around the country and we've got Belfast, uh, not Belfast, we're in Derry, which we haven't been for a long time. A couple of little places that, you know, people haven't, haven't been there for a while. Uh, you know, they'll, be gone. Yeah. they'll be gone. They'll Mary, be gone. Mary well, Black.net. <laughs> That's yeah. where Mary We have a great net. time, yeah. yeah. We have a great time. Um, I've had an amazing band. I mean, my band are so super and they're amazing musicians and great and we've been together for a long long time most of us you know and then so. all of your offspring basically sang for joe biden they're yeah. they're the family but <laughs> joe, joe biden's family traveling troubadours <laughs> you that weren't was, there you weren't there but they were doing everything yeah. in now it was no, amazing I, I i actually was asked oh now but see special invite i had plans you see and so <laughs> i couldn't make it but i watched it from spain <laughs> Sorry, Joe, I'm on Sorry, my holiday. Yeah, not, not coming, back, coming you, back for you, Joe. I was you? invited along, but I did. You know, I, I sometimes like to leave them to do their thing and they yeah. like to yeah. leave me to do my thing, you know, and we, we occasionally, you know, link up together, but I didn't want to burst their bubble either, you know, they were having, you know, it was Overshadowed really, them, Nice Mike. of me, wasn't it? I just, I'm very too nice big, of me. Too big for the president of the United States. Mary Love Biden. it. Um, it's the 40th anniversary of the... Are you just going to be doing the album? I know, we'll do a few songs uh, from the few. old album. I know, we'd have to do all the big favourites. Of the, course. The, yeah. So you know, I know it'll that. be a big mix of stuff, mm. but we will pluck out some ones we haven't done for a while off the first album. I tell you, you're looking great, and it looks like you're just excited to be back on I the am. road again. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so much more. I used to worry about all sorts of things when I was younger. You know, you get hung up on what you're wearing yeah. and, and what people are going to think. Doesn't matter. There's a freedom in it. I am. I'm here. I do what I do. If people want to come, I'll give them a good night, I'll tell you. Oh, you know, brilliant. That's, that's the way I feel oh. about it. I think we should just have a Mary Black sort of a, a, a chat every morning. And <laughs> that's I feel it. Fantastic. Inspirational. Get, get, get us moving. Pleasure to see you, honestly. It's great to have you in. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Mary. Thanks Thank so, you much. so much. Thanks, said Thank no you. to Joe Biden, but said yes to us. Right. Mary Black. <laughs> So staying with us now, Alberto Rossi from the Intercontinental Hotel is in the kitchen and he's making beef in Voltoni. Tini? Tony? Tini. In Voltini. Tini means tiny, only big. You know, oh. in Voltoni. In, 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 okay, so oh, we're, good good morning. we're not going to go oh, there. Yes, exactly. We'll leave <laughs> it the way it is. Let's not go into it. So in Voltini so means excited. basically I'm going to roll the meat and make rolls. So what I have here is beef. You can buy these mini steaks from the shop. Okay. You know, what I use is sirloin. You know, it's a little bit uh, more flavor and it's nice and tender. Is sirloin the most flavorsome beef, you think? Well, yeah, sirloin and strip loin will be more flavor than, let's say, the fillet. You know, there's not so much fat Ribeye. in it, you know? Yeah. Like, the fillet is the price, you know? Yeah. Have you nice cut that in half? I did cut it thin. How do you cut them thin, then? Well, I have a very sharp knife. Okay? <laughs> and I have skills. <laughs> Sorry. Are you walking to the Sorry, oven? Sorry, everyone, this morning. <laughs> Here we go, another one. It's like, open the window. No, oh. And then I have my weapon of choice, you know? And he gives it a good smash. I, I give it mouth. a good whack. OK, right. So. I give it a good whack, so it's not too oh, thick. Because you want it to be thin, but not carpaccio thin. <laughs> <laughs> um, then what I have is a slice of Parma ham. OK. And I put it on top of the meat. On the inside? In the, on the inside. <laughs> because if I put it on the outside, it will just crisp up, get salty, and ruin the whole flavor. This oh, is okay. all balanced, you know? OK. And then I have here what I would call the stuffing. It's just breadcrumbs, taleggio cheese that is like a... It's similar to a brie cheese, very stinky. OK. Very flavoursome. I mean, uh, come from the cheese. Lombard. Now, where could you get that? Can you, you buy can that get it, most Yeah, you can market? get it most of the shops. What's it called it? again? Taleggio. Taleggio. Oh, Taleggio, yeah. It's from uh, Lombardy, you know. The, uh, but okay. what, what would be an alternative to that? Just brie. brie. Oh, just a brie. brie. Go in you and know? get a brie. Yeah. OK. Uh, and then I have here <laughs> breadcrumbs, the Taleggio diced. I have some parsley and breadcrumbs with some garlic and shallots. So it will be like your usual stuffing okay. from the turkey. But just the shallots, the are the shallots pre-cooked? I cook the shallots and the garlic, but just a little okay, bit. Just Not much, bit. just okay. to have them already Lovely. there. And then, as you can see, I have the slice of meat, the parma I'm in there, and then I just put in a little bit like this. Okay, you spread it evenly. Okay. okay? So the lumpy bits there, that's the cheese. That's the taleggio, yes. That is, that's the taleggio. You know, it's lumpy. It, it won't break. 
you know, in smaller pieces, you can... Oh, so could you pieces. put loads of that you in? You can put so loads, depends on what that, well, that meant, then it oozes out. It melts inside, oh, yes, and yeah. it make it nice and, and flavoring some okay, inside. Uh, depends on how much you like cheese. If you like cheese a lot, you can put a lot, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And don't be afraid, you can use blue cheese, you can... Once it melts, okay? okay? And then you just roll it nicely, okay? There's no oh. right way to do it. You just do it without okay. thinking too much. And then what I have is just little toothpicks to maybe secure it so they don't open too much. Uh -huh. Simple as that, yeah? And then again, you know, you do like this. And then I have a pan here that it's warming up. Not too hot, like it's not smoking, burning. Are you burning. trying to, burning. to sear it, is it? Yeah, you sear it off. I put in just a couple of pieces of... Uh, Rosemary for extra flavor. Would you always sear the meat before you put it into the oven? Or? Uh, depends. If you do a roast, usually we don't. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah. Like but... You just put the piece of roast in, low temperature, 155, 158, 160 degrees, and you roast it for longer. So all the juices come out and they cook in their own fat. Yeah. But in this case, I sear it, so I, okay, uh, so I, they I go into the keep pan. it in position. Yeah, I put it in the pan, you know, they go a little bit like that, you know, the, the searing of yeah. it. And all you do is just quickly, you want color on both sides, you know, okay. that's all you want, okay? Then I'm gonna serve it with a little bit of uh, what we call this is rainbow char. It's just a very fancy char with different colors that you just blanch in the water, so salty water. What's charred? What's charred? Charred is like the same as the family of the kale, you know? It just. Okay. It's a nice. You get that in supermarkets. Leaf. You can get in the supermarket, yeah. You just boil it in water with salt for a couple of minutes because it's quite harder than, let's say, spinach. Uh -huh. And then I just put in a little bit of a pan with a little bit of oil and, again, a piece of garlic. Okay. 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 So you can see I cook just both sides. You can deglaze with a little bit of red wine. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, oh, That's where the flavors come, okay? Mm. And then you finish it in the oven, okay? So it doesn't take too long. The oven you want is about 165, 170, so it's not roasting and it's burning everything, but it's just cooking everything in its own juices because you put in a little bit of the red wine, <clears throat> put a little bit of chicken stock, and then it comes out nicely cooked, about 15 to 20 so you, minutes. You, so you put it in the pans, and then how much kind of red wine and juice do you put half into it? Half a red the... wine, and then the half, half a bottle. Half, 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 no, half a glass. <laughs> half a <laughs> glass of, uh, of red wine and half a glass of chicken stock, you know? Chicken stock, not beef stock? Or well, if like... you have beef stock, yes. Uh, okay. but, but the beef stock that they sell at the shop is not as good as the one that we make in the oh, Intercontinental. Oh, pen. really? OK. So, that we take days to make it, you know? You're paying <laughs> the money in exactly. the Intercontinental to get the good beef stock. Well, that's why it tastes so good. And then so they come out like that. Nicely. Oh. This is my magic oven. My goodness. You know, I wish this. I had few of them in work. And you can see... You know, nicely oh. cooked. Okay. Wow. And then you have would, the pizza. Is this the way you would serve it if you were making it at home? Just put it on the yeah, table like absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then you just take, you know, like I'll serve you just now so you don't burn a little yeah. bit of kale and the beef. Tommy doesn't want to probably any. take two bits. Two. <laughs> <laughs> a small one and a big one. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm gonna try some of this. What's the, the chard? The chard, chard is very good. Chard. And I just put garlic and olive oil in. You know? And is it just a little bit of salt? Oh, so over the top before? Yeah. Or in the pan when you're cooking it. And you is know? it kind of like spinachy? Did you say? Yeah, it has yeah. the same flavor. It's a little bit more bitter than the spinach would be, mm. but it's nice. It has a it's little salty. bit more, uh, uh, would you say, texture to it? You know, the spinach okay. kind of melts in your mouth. Right. Let's try the beef. Good. Out. Yeah. Look at that. The, the stuffing, stuffing. It does taste like the stuffing you get at yeah. Christmas or whatever, like that. Yeah. And then you have the cheese inside that makes it a nice feature. Impressive. You know. Oh, it's gorgeous. No, it's lovely. It is. I mean. It doesn't take that much. There's no much mess. You know, as I said, it's always a pan and then finish it in the oven. Thank and you very tell much. me, would you want it to be like well done, the beef, or it depends kind of depends because it's you like so it. thin. You exactly. see, exactly. Being a sirloin and thin, it's not that it's a, 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 I don't know, a four quarter, like yeah. a quarter of meat. You know, oh. so you can you can still eat it like this even and if it's thing, not fully cooked. The thing to do is have a sharp knife. Absolutely, very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> I Alberto, always... <laughs> thank you so much mm. for that. That's delicious. That is gorgeous. Good. Now, after the break, we're celebrating Autism Awareness Month. Carlin Dam is back in a few minutes. Yup. Welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, Derek is in Dublin this morning for a celebratory coffee morning to mark the end of Autism Awareness Month. And it's over to him now. Morning, Derek. Yes, thank you very much. We're, what a spread we have here this morning in Tribe in Dublin 6 in Redgar, all to tie in with Autism Acceptance Month. So we're joined now by the Young family all the way from Dunboyne and County Mead. We have Mum Louise, daughter Ashley, and also Adam Harris, CEO of AsIAm.ie. And Mum Louise, we'll, we'll start with you, the diagnosis. When did you first find out? So Ashley would have been officially diagnosed last year, but we would have known for quite a while that um, Ashley was just a quirky child. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and from there then, uh, you, you started to reach out, you were looking for options and you came across As I Am. Yes, um, so you're handed a diagnosis and then kind of left your own devices. So we found, actually, Ashling found As I Am and we got in contact with them and they were just amazing. They provided so much education for us because, I mean, I was aware of autism, but I didn't necessarily understand what that meant. So they provided online um, like a seven week course of education for me and my husband, which really helped. And then we could help our families, extended families with that education. Um, they provided social groups, which was the main reason for getting in touch for Ashling to find friends who, you know, that she could just be herself with um, and as I am provided that for us. So I suppose for you it really was a case and for you and the family of someone holding your hand and guiding you through that process. They literally, Neve Mellerick literally took us by the hand and led us through the process of understanding autism, um, reaching out to meet other autistic children and young adults and having a space to to be ourselves and for Ashley to be herself. And how are you coping now as a family? How, how are things at home? Things are quite good because we have the support of As I Am and Ashling has an, a, a little um, group that she meets of other autistic children also on a Thursday. Uh, so things are, yeah, they're okay. Okay. Now, I suppose, Ashley, you were telling me earlier on, you kind of diagnosed, self-diagnosed yourself, really, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I basically just kind of came across autism one of the days and just kind of started doing some research on it, started looking at its traits, and then the more I looked at them, the more I realised, that's that sounds vaguely familiar, and then I came across As I Am and found, like, all, a lot of the information that I would know that I just kind of went, yeah, no, that sounds about right. Mom, I'm, we, I think I may have autism, and that's... <laughs> and we went from there. You're 14 at the moment. Yeah. Tell us about the groups, the support networks you've been involved with in As I Am. Yeah, I was in... With As I Am, I was in the D&D group, uh, art group, uh, meet-up group, and I went to, like, Crazy Golf. And all of those were really, really helpful because I was able to just be myself and I felt a bit more safe then. Yeah, and you were saying that you feel you're in a safe space when you're surrounded by, you know, like-minded people. I yeah, because when I'm not, it's like worried what they'll think of me or this and the other. But when it's like with As I Am, I feel a lot more safe and a lot more secure. Adam, you are CEO uh, with As I Am. The narrative really has changed in terms of autism awareness because we're now dealing with autism acceptance. Absolutely, and just for April we conducted an attitude to autism poll where we, re we sampled a representative sample of a thousand Irish adults. Over 80% of people have heard of autism. 46% of people have someone in their family who is autistic. But when we become aware of something, it's about what we do with that information. And unfortunately the reality on the ground is still incredibly challenging for many autistic people. We recently published a same chance report which document the experiences of 1,600 Irish adults and children on the autism spectrum. And what it showed is that there's still significant barriers in health, in education, in employment, in actually being yourself in the community, with over 80% of people saying that they had to mask or pretend that they weren't autistic to go about day-to-day -day tasks and get acceptance. So we need to move away from awareness towards actually accepting and celebrating autistic people in our communities. Mom, if we, we had the Minister, uh, Minister Rabbit in the studio earlier on, if you had the ear of the Minister right now, what would you say to her? I would say to her, um, you need to pile your resources into education. Um, the schools have do what they can with what they've got, but they need more resources. Um, and employers and the general community need to be educated by people like As I Am who know no autism so give them the resources to do that to educate employers and educate the, the community in general all right uh, mum louise daughter ashley and ceo of as i am .ie. where can we find you online by the way adam you can see us on as i am .ie. we really depend on the public support to sustain and grow our work so you can make a donation as part of autism month today on as i am .ie. thank you very much so guys we're continuing on with our coffee morning here this morning back to you in the studio thank, thank you, you so much, much Derek. Derek. and it's amazing because Ashling knew what 
the work yeah. as I am did mm. was able to self-diagnose. It's unfortunate that we don't have the supports yeah. in place that that can happen uh, at an earlier stage, but fair play to her, absolutely But they rely amazing. so much, as Adam just said, on public funding and public yeah. support as well, so do help out if you can. It's it's phenomenal uh, what he's managed to do. Uh, you are, of course, with Ireland AM, and still to come, someone who is Tommy Tiernan's TV wife. We're going to be chatting to Derry Girl star Tara Lynn O'Neill. Plus what to wear for a city break this summer, and we have all the looks that you're going to pack into your carry-on. Perfect for Alan on a bank holiday weekend. <laughs> Plus, we're going to find out the health benefits of using protein power. That's all powder. That's all on the way after nine. And like a new superhero, protein, protein power. power. Hello, you're very welcome back to the final hour of Ireland M. Here is what's coming up. Yes, the Dairy Girl star whose character loved hideous jumpers. Ma Mary at 920, actress Tarlyn O'Neill will be joining us in studio. That's going to be a laugh. Look yeah. forward to that chat. Now, what happens when you take protein powder every day? <gasps> There you go. Is that it? Somebody's been doing it, haven't they? <laughs> Nutritionist Sinead Bradbury is here with all the answers because if you do want to build muscle, Sinead, protein every day is a must. Yeah, protein is so important, not just for muscles, Tommy, but so many different processes in the body for enzyme, for transportation, for blood. So we're talking about products, vegetarian sources, animal sources and of course whey protein and different types of products. So it's not just the protein powders or the yogurts or the milk, there's actually loads of other areas you can find protein. Absolutely, food first always but let's talk products as well. Absolutely, looking forward to that. <gasps> We're going to hulk out well, later on, that's what you, I always think, Alan people are going to take my protein. For flexing his muscles Go on, these flex. days. Give us your, yeah. give us your, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Rob Conn, the bad actor. Bad actor. Now, if, you've, uh, if you're not going to the gym but you have a city break planned, especially it's the bank holiday, I'm sure lots of you are getting away, we have a, a looks that will help you through a nice city break. Yes, if you're heading on a city break this long weekend, thinking Cannes, Rome, Barcelona, somewhere away. Kerry. We're taking, no, we have nothing for Kerry. <laughs> we have nothing, nothing for Kerry, no. We get none of Merlin, Merlin's gone to Kerry. You could wear this jacket. You you could. Yeah, I could, you yeah, could. yeah. But we are mixing and matching. <laughs> perfect day for, for travelling, our exploring the city. Then we've got some kind of florals. We've got the perfect pieces to add to your wardrobe and mix and match. And it's all available from Luke and Shopping Centre. Well, Luke Shopping Centre. There you well, go. Get my no wellies, wellies out of the car. Get we'll your bring wellies them in out of the car there, yeah. Murren, yeah. Now, Derek's in Ratgar in Dublin all morning. Derek, how are you getting on? Yes, Al, we're continuing our lovely coffee morning here uh, at Tribe in Rackgar in Dublin. Uh, very quickly, an interesting fact about your team, Adam. 85% of autistic people are unemployed or underemployed, so we're really proud that half of our team, 28, are either autistic or neurodivergent, bringing that lived experience to life and all the work that we do. All right, thank you very much. So there you, you heard it from Adam, which is great. And I suppose acceptance, education and progression is the way forward. Absolutely. We need to get to a point where every autistic person has the same chance to participate in the community. All right, back to you guys in studio. Fair play to you, Derek. Absolutely. He is in Tribe in Rathgar. If you're in the area, absolutely get down there and give them whatever bit of support you can. Hello, you're very welcome back. Now, Derek is doing some great work this morning, but we were talking about a Donegal teenager who was out in Letterkenny a few weeks ago and he spotted a girl from the other side yeah. of the room, didn't go over and say hello, so he went on to Reddit and wrote a post asking her to get in touch if she knows. Because she had green hair and green she hair was glasses and yes. had like These two lads are trousers. so invested. They're basically like green haired girl with parachute pants. <laughs> really can't be Text that hard us to on find. Ireland AM. Anyway, we were talking about teenage discos and remembering the good old days. Uh, and yeah. I love yeah. this one. Sinead said, I'll never forget the smell of those discos. He'd walk into the room <laughs> and be hit with a wave of Lynx Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I used to drown myself oh, in Lynx, <laughs> Lynx Atlantis and Lynx Africa. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just came yeah. back to me. It almost yeah. took me the smell I think of it's want, called fellas. Axe now, is it? Is it or is it still Lynx? No, Axe is still, American. Yeah, oh, still still American. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Jules. I'll, I'll never forget the phrase. Here, will you meet me, mate? Will you meet me, mate? Or will you meet me, mate, over here? <laughs> uh, with the lads would come over and they'd be so nervous to ask. So, like, you, me friend likes you. Oh, <laughs> like, God. You come and them. Me friend likes you. Um, there's a message here. When the smoking ban came into effect, the reek from nightclubs. Dear Lord, the smoke used to mask some of the most horrible smells in the oh, place. Oh, wow. That we almost, our links. Uh, our links, but we almost went on strike. We worked in a nightclub and the smoking ban came in because of the smell. 
Oh, we were like, if carpet. you don't get rid of this carpet now, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. it's to work carpet going. be stinking. This. What yeah. about this And you'd be one? sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sean said, well, it used to be the sign of a good night at a disco with the number of shifts that you got. <laughs> Is that not still the same? It must be the it same. It's still the same. How many do you get? How well, many do you get? The old washing machine it's here. It's quality, us. not quantity. <laughs> the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, referring back to Murren's in the Gale talk when she'd be shifting lads and what she was called over there. <laughs> um, remember the slow sets? Oh, yeah. a slow the set. Slow set. So and we have Catherine says here, around. back in the day, this, we used to do the slow dance to China in your hand from China Japan. In your hand. And right. then the song would stop and there'd be this awkward pause and then everybody just go back to You don't to know what friends. to do. Yeah. You're like... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Go away. I can't remember what the oh, oh, what's that? Are. What's that old thing? Mm-hmm. What's that old thing that people used to always say? It's been in loads of books. Leaves um, uh, when you're dancing. When you're dancing with a boy, leave space for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wasn't that what it was? <laughs> so don't be too so close. Don't be too close. <laughs> My mother told me that one. So it's like that is amazing. A school one, like the teachers be coming and trying to spread <laughs> the heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh thank God. you for sending in some of those great texts. Love it. After the break, we're going to be chatting to Derry Girls, Ma Mary. Look forward to this. Actress Tara Lynn O'Neill is joining us in studio. We will see you back here in a couple of minutes. It's great to have you back. Now, our next guest is a familiar mm. face. Of course, you're going to recognise her from Derry Girls. But before we have a chat with the lovely Tara Lynn O'Neill, let's take a look at some of her best bits. Is that OK? It's sounds Ooh. rude, Tara. It's going to be good. What do you think you're playing at? What's your blazer? I've decided to put my own spin on the uniform this year. I'll spin you across that floor. Get your blazer on. Look, Mummy, I'm not a clone. I should be allowed to express my individuality. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing my blazer. End of story. Jerry, pass me the wooden spoon. I have to set an example. No, dear God, no. You're not talking about a ban. Yes. Let's call it a suspension. What do you expect me to do on a Friday, Finola? Cook? You expect me to cook? Dip into your trust fund, of course. No bother at all. Pass us in the phone, I just need to ring the bank. <laughs> Stem 654321, that's the account number and the password. What is it again? Was it now? Oh, I catch yourself on. We're Class, talking about the lovely love thing. It. Look, you're looking back on season one. <laughs> Look at me there. <laughs> Hello, Tara Lenoni. Lovely to have you here. Good morning. So, what was Tommy Tiernan like as a husband? Was he good to put the bins out? Nightmare? What was going on? <laughs> yeah. The problem with Tommy is he tries to make you laugh all the time, and then you feel the pressure to make him laugh. Um, and the problem is the takes can go on and on because, as, as you know, there's, there might be 12 of us in the scene. Yeah. So if one person laughs, then we have to go all the way back to the <laughs> beginning. So the director kind of hates us, the crew hates us. Um, but, yeah, no, to- Tommy's just... He's, a, he's an exceptional actor, that's the thing. Yeah. Right, like, it's just amazing. To, and even you can see the chemistry even on set. Like, what, you, did we hate each other? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, took it from well, you've acted it very well then. <laughs> like, it is just, the whole show, it's just been such a, a positive, coming out of Northern Ireland, like, who would have thought five years ago, like, that you'd be talking about, like, a comedy coming out of Northern Ireland around the Good Friday Agreement, yeah. and we're seeing so much of that with Bill Clinton and Joe Biden, everybody coming in. And even that Good Friday moment, it, like, the final part oh. of the show. Like, it's exceptional. It was, and, it, like, when you're part of that, you knew that this is just something really special. When I heard they were doing an hour-long special, I'll be honest, I was nervous because I thought, you know, Dairy Girls has been so communal. Mm. Uh, you know, it's loved by everyone. And yeah. I thought, well, will it divide? But I think Lisa handled it beautifully because at the end of the day, there's people who are 25 now who have been had a lifetime of peace. Yeah. You know, and it's a reminder to everyone how hard the Good Friday Agreement was fought for, you know, and, and the things that people sacrificed to get us there. It was so amazing you done in a comedy. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. to, 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 like... It was, it's up for memorable moment at the BAFTAs. Yeah. Now you're up against the Queen and Paddington, so... And it is the one that the audience votes for, so mm, all the, your viewers, please vote. We'll vote get on to it. For yeah. the ba- BAFTA moment, because be- that shows, like, you're now inextricably linked mm. with the good... For, that must be... You must sit there going, we started a comedy show. Yeah, I had... None of us would have known how big it was. I, mean, I was in New York recently, and I was in Central Park, and a woman walked by with a dog, and she went, I love you! And I thought she was just a crazy American. So I went, I love you too. <laughs> and she went, Dairy Girls. And I could not believe that it was just someone random in New York, you know. 
It's amazing. I, I, I just find that like the Good Friday Agreement, something that everybody kind of, ah, yeah, the Good Friday Agreement, people didn't really know it. Mm. Yeah. But like a show like that has really brought it to a younger generation as well who probably didn't live through that time. Yeah. No, and that's the thing, because obviously at the minute in Northern Ireland we're facing another 10% cuts in the arts and culture, and yet it's the thing, it's our most exportable, you know, device. Our culture and, and our arts and our writers and our actors and north and south of the border are just do you know we're out there Such globally time. with the Oscars with the guys, yeah. um, and yet we and in the north we don't fund it. So and it's it's interesting that that it was that cross border the arts community community that were bringing people from all backgrounds together. Yet you, when it came to someone from a border region, you punched him, Ard Lohanlon. Oh, of course, it is. Ard Lohan. In the show now. <laughs> they say never meet your heroes, but I really think my heroes should never meet me because <laughs> I just get so nervous. Um, you know, we, I just sitting next to Mary. Black this morning. I, I just, I couldn't even breathe. I didn't even say anything to her. She probably thought I was rude. Um, I'm not great with my hair. I just get so excited. Yeah, and Ardle O'Hanlon when he came on set for Derry Girls. Yeah, he just said, um, I'm a big fan. And I went, shut up, Ardle, so am I. And hit him and uh, walked off because I didn't know how to what bring to it back say. from there. Yeah. Awkward. Awkward. If, if, she, if you get a little slap from Tara, it means she likes you. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. We haven't had the slap yet, but after the show, yeah. You're okay, very far away. Looking if I really love you. Looking forward to Are you slap. looking for a slap and tickle? Um, like, because you're in the fall as well. Oh, yeah, briefly, very uh, briefly. Yeah, but like, do you do you get somebody because with the fall everybody's just waiting when's the sequel come for that Derry Girls even people are they, they, they want more but I think that's the best thing that Lisa McGee has done is leave people wanting more and she will, will always continue to write about what she knows and about home yeah. in a funny and uh Clever, very clever way. Um, so, you know, like everything, you have to say goodbye to it and move on to pastures new and try new things. And you are trying new things yeah, because uh, this is your hosting What's the Story on Virgin Media. Yeah. And this is a, a book show. So you're stepping into the role of interviewer, which is, which is kind of new for you. I have a new appreciation for what you guys do. It's not easy, people. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. the, the, I've worked with John before, doing some voiceover work on um, his travel show. And... They asked would I do it. They said, are you into books? And of course I went. Oh. Yeah, no. John's producing it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I joined the team and it's been, a, it's been a learning curve. But the best thing about the show is that I, book shows can tend to feel very worthy. Yes. yes. Um, and unfortunately... No bit of crack in them and it's... Uh... Well, and that's the whole point of a book club is yes. the crack. So unfortunately, um, they got me a presenter. So it's all about the crack. Well, you look like you're having the crack there anyway. I mean, like it must be—it must be fun to just be the one asking the questions, but actually, you love the stuff. Like, you're—it's like a conversation just down the pub almost. Well, if you think about a book show or a book club, mm -hmm. you tend to be having the book club with people that you know. Yeah. So you tend—they tend to have the same taste as you. So you tend to read the same books. The great thing about this show is we've got people from all walks of life coming in to be interviewed. They're reading the books. We've got all genres of books. Aeson's are sponsoring us. Um, so I'm being introduced to books and literature that I wouldn't, and genres that I would never think of. And then the good thing about a book club is the banter. Yeah, yeah. It's so nice and it's so lovely. You really are inviting people in yeah. to have a bit of fun, which I love about it as well. Um, but you're doing this new skill, interviewing people and mm -hmm. doing your thing. We're going to have to throw your name into the ring for the Late Late Show when Ryan pops off. Because Ryan can, can, I think Ryan should just stay. Just stay, because all this infighting of everyone going, who's going to get it? Well, because, we know, exactly. Well, because unfortunately, you were... I'm not a good listener. I'm a better talker. <laughs> <laughs> That's and fine. <laughs> It'll be great. Everyone's drinking wine at home. Because you were recently interviewing Chelsea Clinton. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of it. Um, I interviewed um, Phil from Somebody Feed Phil as well and I interviewed Lisa McGee herself. Um, yeah, I'm, it's, a, it's something that I love because it's just chatting to people. Yeah. And you realise that, you know, I've been on the other end, I've been on this side of the sofa and being on this side of the sofa can be quite nerve-wracking because you mm. don't know what's coming. Mm. And, and you realise as a presenter that you can put someone at ease and just make it a chat and mm. from that chat can come magic, you know, and Chelsea was amazing. She's an amazing woman. Is it weird because I think you said something that, you know, I suppose as Irish people, we are, we're always filling silences and we want to just, and oh, I've got a point about that. Whereas Chelsea Clinton is very measured and she takes time to think about what she's yeah. going to say. Like, what's that, that what like? What's well, yeah, that what's, what's that I'm about? the youngest of seven. If there was a pause in my family, it was like straight in. You had, you had to get your say straight over. I mean, I only became an actor so that people would listen to me. Um, so, yeah, to, to see some, a, a, a woman 
um, at my age, well, slightly younger, but to see her so confident and you would ask her a question and she would really think about it and I'd be worried that she... <laughs> Is she all right? <laughs> Do we need a doctor? And then you realise, no, that's that's someone thinking. I'd never seen somebody thinking about a question because we what's, just go straight in. What's his pause? Just there poking you? <laughs> you I'm okay? Thinking. I'm thinking. Um, no, she's she's. I looked at Jerry's like I've never seen someone thinking before. It's so weird. <laughs> just let it come in your head. Now you're out. Try yes. it on live television. You're, the, the panic well, that, happens to me a lot. That is the amazing thing. I was sitting next to her and, re and being inspired by this amazing woman. And then obviously on the show we've got so many amazing female guests, but not only that so many f amazing female authors I mean yeah crime is in Irish literature oh, and crime Liz Nugent is Jink. surrounded by women women yeah. authors have taken over taken um, over the world they're dark we like a bit of murder um, so listen, uh, you can catch up on What's the Story. You can watch it live now on Virgin Media 3, of course, on Virgin Media Player as well. Congratulations on the oh. new gig, gig. Sure, you're like a duck to water. Absolutely. Turn in Sinking. <laughs> the legs are going pretty quick. <laughs> Pocket up top. Pleasure having you in, Sarah. It's a secret. Now, to come, we're in the catwalk for some City Break styles. Yeah, we'll see you after this short break. <laughs> Do you know what? what? It's around the corner. The long weekend. Is there sun though? Uh, Derek said no, but my app said yes. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. We're talking about holiday wardrobes yeah, today. Yeah, stylist Rob Condon has the essentials to include for your next trip away, whether yes. it be Paris, Barcelona, or Kerry. Yep. But yeah, we've got it. we've got one for Kerry. One for Kerry. Did you get we're, the, did you we get the wellies from my? Did you we're get the wellies from my? We're talking cans. Oh, we're talking can. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. let's yeah. get on. To Kerry, you Sarah is our first look. <laughs> Sarah is our first look, and this is one that you could definitely wear in Kerry. So we're thinking <laughs> travel in this outfit, something that's comfortable for traveling if you're going on a plane, but also something that's comfortable for city exploring. So having a lightweight Mac is gonna do yeah. that. So you can layer underneath it. Um, if it gets a little bit warm, you can take it off and you can throw it in your oversized bag, which is great for traveling. This is a great Mac. Macs are definitely back. It's tying in at the waist. It's from Lisa Baker. All of her clothes born are from Lucan. Now when you say a Center. Mac, what's the material on it? It's a really lightweight material. So it's a cotton material. So it's not your usual traditional Mac. So okay. it is a really uh, lightweight a material. Shape, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it has that Mac shape. Pastel colors, which we're seeing so much of for spring, summer. It's tying in at the waist, but I think it's that handy piece that you can throw in your bag, especially for traveling. And if it is a little bit colder, over a dress, yeah. it's gonna work. So it is, and because of the nude colors to it, it's gonna work with lots of different and you're doing your stylist, but you haven't closed it over top <laughs> we need to see properly, so you need to see everything. Yes, yeah, so we've got the top underneath it then um, from Dunn Store. So it's a really light knit top. It's a vest top, actually, but you could. You could go with a chunky knit. So if you're going to carry this weekend, you can put a chunky knit <laughs> under that. You carry it on, lads. You can <laughs> put a chunky knit under that. Uh, the um, jeans. And it's going to work. And then with the jeans, we've gone with um, a turn up jeans, they're denim jeans. But I think these are a great pair of jeans because you can see with the loafers here, they work really well. They've worked well with a trainer. But also, if you put a pair of heels with them and a dressy top, they're also going to work. Did you turn them up? No, they're they, like that. they are yeah. turned up like yeah. that. Okay. They are turned up yeah, yeah, like right. that. So they're a lovely color. Um, yeah, they are. They're a great color. Um, but and but they're going to work. This bag you put the sink in this bag. Yes, you I could definitely. This. So really oversized bag, perfect for your travel essentials for the plane. It's only twenty um, euro. For your carry on. Um, a really great piece and also if you're going somewhere that's really hot it could turn into a beach bag yeah, as well it's great um, yeah. yeah so it works really well but we've kept them to quite neutral so that you can mix and match them in your wardrobe so say if you're wearing this traveling the top and the jeans with a pair of heels are also going to work we've gone with loafers there um, also from I was going to say I would probably put everything for a weekend in that bag but Mirren probably not no gosh <laughs> you'd absolutely fit everything not. <laughs> absolutely not would not no. be able to do it lovely earrings on Sarah as well uh, yeah great pair of earrings there so we've gone with a midi hoop earring with diamante detail so they're quite a simple piece to add there from the jewelers absolutely gorgeous thank you so Thanks, much Sarah. for that Sarah it is lovely, lovely isn't it yeah now, lovely look we're going to Barcelona or Lisbon with yes, our next look from Ian yeah. here so Eva's with us here so this is the perfect we're seeing lots more summer in this look here um, we've gone with the hat, we've gone fully out. Denim jacket, always a great piece to mm -hmm. bring, as well as a layer and piece. Um, but we've gone with this beautiful summer dress here this morning. It's available from Dunn Stores. So you can see the layer detailing to it. 
really very bright colours crazy. in this as well. With the hat oh, we're there, starting with the hat. Um, we've got the hat um, at six euro there. Really great hat. You can see the navy detailing to this hat. But a great piece to add to your wardrobe as well. Yeah. Um, a really stylish piece. And then with the denim jacket here, again, it's a lightweight denim jacket, but it is perfect if it's a little bit colder to throw over a summer dress like this. Um, also, and that's got a lot of give in it, doesn't it? It does, little, yeah. Elastic, yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, also, if you wanted to make it a little bit more kind of harder of a look, you go a little retro leather jacket with it. Um, it's also going to work with it. But this dress, I think it's just great. The fit, the shape, the flair. As we get into summer, you could bring this into your events wardrobe. If you accessorise it right, maybe belt it to the middle. Mm. You could really dress up this look here. And that tiered, the tool tiered look is very in this yes, year, Yes, it, it is. It's yeah. everywhere at the moment. But definitely a dress that you can dress up for any event or wear it really casual by mm. throwing a denim jacket with it, a leather jacket, it's going to work Lovely. in your wardrobe. And little gold sandals. Yes, and then we've gone with the gold espadrilles here, which are a perfect piece to add to this. They're also a perfect piece to bring on holidays. Going with a pair of white jeans with these, even the denim jeans we just saw in the previous yeah. outfit, they're going to work. So they are a piece that you throw into the suitcase that are going to work with lots of different outfits because of the colour with them. Yeah, I love the shape of the glasses. Yeah, really great pair of glasses here. They're oversized um, glasses, but a great piece to add to your wardrobe there from uh, Mullins and Henry. And the earrings. Then with the exactly. earrings there, we have gone with a leaf motif with diamante detailing. Lovely, and we've got nice. bracelets to match as well. Yes, we've gone with the bracelet here, so you can see there's the beaded detail into the bracelet, which also goes in then to the bangle, which has the matching beads to it. So it's a, it's one piece. Making it all work. Yes. Lovely, Rob. Yes. I, I can nice. feel myself in Lisbon <laughs> oh, right so now doing that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eve. Um, now, Can, ready to go to what's Danny going to be wearing can. for Can? Oh, here she yes. is. There Love she is. French Riviera. Down the Riviera with this look That's here. lovely. A gorgeous look. It's a simple look. It's three pieces that you're going to be able to mix and match in your wardrobe on holidays. Um, first off, we've got the blazers. We've got oversized with this blazer here. It's linen. Um, but it's going to go with lots of different colours in your wardrobe. Thin, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, love yeah. that. Um, and then with the top underneath, we've gone with bold blocks underneath it. So it's working really well with I that. love that little top underneath. It's, go it's gorgeous. Yeah, it is. It's a gorgeous little top. Great price point for this top. It certainly it, is. It'll go with lots of different things in your wardrobe. So you can see we've done it with the trousers here this morning. But if you went with a skirt, so if you went with a coloured skirt yeah. or a 50 skirt tucked in, it's going to match in with it really like well. Blue jeans yeah, and yeah, yeah, it'd be gorgeous. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to go with so many And there's so many colours in it. You could wear a multitude of jackets. Exactly, with it. there is. You could yeah. go with a bow block Friday, you could go with a gold. Yeah. Every time we have... think we've killed the pedal pusher, no. it it's comes back. back. <laughs> oh, but that looks great, though. Yeah, it does. It works really well with it. I think with a pair of um, trousers like this, whether you want to go with the crop or whether you want to go with a long, you're going to get lots of wear on your holidays out of them because you can mix and match them between your casual wardrobe and your dressy wardrobe. Throwing a denim jacket over this look would make it really casual with a pair of trainers are really dress it up. The sunglasses then, we've gone with a slightly smaller pair of sunglasses yeah, here. Yeah, not but, as big. Yeah, but still, if you're someone who wants to go with a smaller sunglasses, but still working in great with this. The jewellery here. And then with the jewellery, we've gone with a matching necklace and bracelet. So we're seeing bold gold jewellery is everywhere at the moment and it's going nowhere. And you can see the diamante detail into the side of it. But I think it has that effect of a chunky, but it's not, it's quite streamlined. Yeah, but it gives you that weight yes. as well. I and those that. shoes. Yes. They are Danny's they're own Danny's shoes. They're Danny's own shoes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was going to go. They're Danny, amazing. they're fab. Of course they're Danny's own <laughs> fab. shoes. Fab. Oh, oh, 50. Hello. Yes. Darling, here. Yes. Where are you off to? Italy. You're going to Italy this weekend, yes. Sarah. Lovely. Yes. Very Dolce and Gabbana inspired dress with this. Florals, we're tying in at the waist. What I love about it is oh, that it has gorgeous. that 50s flair to it, but it does have a little bit, because of the colour detailing, it has a little bit of a sports looks vibe to it. So it's making it a little bit more modern. It's so great. Um, Kelly. Yes. So oh, Grace fab. Kelly. Yeah. Gorgeous. You can see the fit and flair to the dress there. Love the colours of it. So you've got loads of block bow brights in there. You've got oranges, purples. So match them back in in your accessories and shoes. Take one of those colours and match them back in. Uh, here, if you've got something elegant this and then weddings, yeah. great, whatever you've got to and go And you to really don't need to add anything no. much no. to it no, because no, it is the same shoes and earrings lovely, with it. Yeah. So you can see with the shoes there, we've gone with a pink shoe there, but taking one of those block, block bow yeah. brights, I go with the bag in that as well. You could, or any of the colours that are in the dress. It's a and really a pair of earrings with it. for any occasion. And then we've gone with the oversized 90s hoop and they have got a crystal detail on the inside there. Um, but yeah, I keep it quite simple with the neckline because you have got the collar detail into it and the print. So keep it quite simple with the neckline. Yeah. That's Stay really nice. Very, and your very, range yeah, very yeah. graceful. And they're Kelly, all available from Luke and Shopping Centre right now. Rob, thank you so much. Thank Where you. are you going this weekend? I'm going nowhere. There we go. I'm going right. nowhere. So that's dressed, I'm living through these he's outfits. Dressed from <laughs> that's it. Thank you so much. Thank Rob. you. Now coming up next, the benefits.
benefits of protein. We find out why it's so important for our diets. We'll see you back here very shortly. Well, I think the majority of us know that protein is important as part of a balanced diet, but do we really know why? There you go, here to talk us through the benefits of protein and ways to include it in our diet is performance nutritionist Sinead Bradbury. Sinead, it's lovely to have you here. Thanks. So, Thanks. protein, we always talk about it. Protein, get it in your chicken or what, eggs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why is it important for us? Well, it's often associated with muscle building and sport and recovery, but it's so important for so many other aspects of our health um, in terms of transportation of hemoglobin in the blood, um, enzymes and breaking down our food, and of course in our skin, our hair, our nails, the keratin is really important. So it's, it's, we need it so often and there's like plant protein sources and there's animal sources, so it's good to get a combination of yeah. both. So it's not just for people who are working out religiously. This is for people, whether they're young or old. A hundred percent, Tommy. Yeah, it's so important at all ages, and especially as we get older as well. I don't think that's commonly known, but like we lose about eight percent of our muscle mass with each passing de decade. So the older we get, the more protein we need, which is really important for our function and um, you know mobility and strength and quality of life as we get older too. So that's a big message to get out there too. Older we get, more we need. So how m much do we need, and do some people need more than others? Yes, uh, yes, Marin. Um, it generally goes by body weight. So um, about 60 grams for a grown adult uh, male. Um, but we usually say I work with elite athletes, they need about two grams per kg of body weight. So if they're a 90 kg player, they need 180 grams to support strength building and repair and recovery from the work and the intensity of their training. So it varies depending on. So say what someone's doing. at home and they're like, how much should I be? Depending on their weight again, but about 50 to 60 grams would be great and about 20 grams per meal. So usually we think in, in terms of animal protein about the palm of your hand. So about three portions of protein, about 20 grams throughout okay. the day would be fantastic. I always think it's really important as well in terms of balancing blood sugar levels. So if we're just having carbohydrates, you know, um, on their own, we'll get elevated blood sugars. But if you have a little bit of protein, a bit more stable and a bit more satisfied. Um, oh, it can make you feel fuller for longer. Yeah, yeah, just oh, a bit more satisfied, okay. less cravings. Gotcha. Yeah. A lot of people now, and you're seeing it all over supermarket shelves, there's protein milk and protein yeah. yogurts and protein supplements or whatever else. The but bars. I think it's really important. We're talking well balanced diets here, and it's not just even the eggs and chicken. Like, the likes of nuts, seeds, yeah. they're all really rich in protein. Yeah, and we know we should be eating more plant-based foods for sure. So varying your diet with beans and lentils, especially if you're vegetarian or vegan. Um, you know, um, quinoa, it's like a seed, it's got some protein mm -hmm. in there as well. So um, I think everybody could do a combination um, between plant and animal protein. And yeah. even for a snack, I think it's really good. Yeah, nuts like and nuts, seeds. Nuts, yeah, nuts hummus, like, yeah. hummus like, and as crackers. As opposed to, yeah, like eating crisps or whatever else in the shop. Uh, Go and get yourself a packet of nuts and there's actually goodness in yeah, there too. Yeah, food first always. And I'm seeing so much more when I'm analysing food diaries in my work. Um, there's a lot of protein intake. I think a lot of people are getting enough protein in general. Okay. Um, because of all these uh, products that are on the market that, you know, obviously is what you're saying, Tommy, if we can get it through food, nuts and seeds and um, beans and lentils and eggs and that. you want to cut it's out so much sugars better. and yes, stuff Yes, the sugar. And, and there is a perception that if you see protein on the label, it's a health product. And that's not necessarily always the case. Okay. You know, it's supplementing with a good quality whey protein if you're an athlete is really helpful to hit the yeah. targets that you need. But not everybody needs to be snacking on protein milk, protein yogurts, protein bars consistently throughout the day. Okay, so let's talk about that because I think it's been an amazing marketing yeah. uh, uh, boon mm -hmm. for people. And it's I, protein bars are everywhere. They're like three fifty. Yep. They're absolutely everywhere, and people are like people are buying them clearly. Mm -hmm. So is this your food first? This is a food. Can you be like, yeah, get your protein through this? Yeah, well, it is a processed food. These are natural foods, natural occurring foods. Yeah. Um, so it is a processed food. Um, I, when, in my work, uh, it can be handy from time to time if a player, an athlete needs to top up a little bit, but not as an everyday occurrence. Um, and just, I think the main message to get out there is protein, if just because it says protein on the label does not mean it's a health product. Uh, yeah. You should check in, do you need do you need even the extra protein? Like sometimes have the chocolate bar instead, maybe. That's what I'm about, okay, yeah, okay, exactly. Okay. If you have a craving, enjoy the chocolate, savour it, indulge it, enjoy it, be mindful about it. But 
um, a lot of people are just snacking on products consistently rather than having decent meals and you know overdoing it really. Okay. okay. In, in terms of protein powders and stuff, we see like casein prote protein, whey protein, like different yeah. types. Yeah. For people who are interested in taking a supplement, mm -hmm. what is the difference and what are the benefits of different yeah, types? Yeah, great question, Tommy. Yeah, well, whey is predominantly what I work with with the athletes that I work with because it's very easily absorbed into the body, goes right into the muscles where it's needed to help recovery. Um, we're very lucky. We have a fantastic dairy industry in this country, mm. so we have a high quality byproduct of the dairy industry in whey. Um, casein is a slower digestible protein, um, so it, 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 is, it has got the essential amino acids that we need and we require, but whey would be my preference. And then plant protein and is also good. they're part of a shake, so you kind of take a powder, throw it in some water or milk, shake yeah. it up, and total then that's it. total convenience and total function, and, yeah. and it's fantastic. But I always like to add maybe berries, you know, um, some uh, like yogurt, yogurts, whatever different else. things, banana Smoothie. in there to make it, you know, enhance the nutrient intake as well. But functionally, it works. Because it, it's rare now, and I certainly think it was a few years ago, you'd walk into a house and there'd be the big big thing of protein <laughs> in the corner for everybody and I'm like are you going out having a massive are you doing a massive marathon and it's like no because it's again it's a marketing it's been a very effective marketing too totally it's the dramatic um, incline in terms of the, the marketing when it comes to protein products they're everywhere you go to pennies yeah. and you get in your pajamas there's protein products at the at the, yeah. at the counter so um, well, yeah it's just kind of maybe ease off and look at the food first approach and be mindful but if you are an athlete and training hard um, just think about supplementation if necessary and definitely as you get older and sometimes our appetite okay. decreases as we get older yeah. so even whey protein even I know creatine isn't in the same bracket but there's more and more research going into creatine for help for cognitive function as we as we age so, so okay right that's put this all aside for average Joe soap everybody at home food first yep. you just want your kind of your eggs your slices of ham cheese nuts whatever and seeds. And nuts and seeds yeah how much like kind of what sort of portion size and how should you be splitting up between carbs and well protein carbs fats yeah. all that sort of yeah. stuff um, well if you're not working out intensely I would look at a plate to be a quarter protein Okay. A quarter carbohydrates like potatoes or pasta or rice, and then half your plate vegetable vegetables. and salad. That's balanced. Perfect. That's getting what you need. Okay. That three times a day, or even start with eggs, and, you know, and having a snack with the nuts and seeds, nut butters. Um, you're going to get what you need. And for vegans that. or vegetarians, yeah. it is very possible oh, you have to, to be get protein. Yes, it is important and it is possible, but you have to be very mindful. You know. What happens if you overdo it on protein? Yeah, there's research coming out more and more that I suppose if you're predisposed to kidney disease, you can have an issue. But for the majority of us, if we're healthy, it just gets excreted in our neurons. So don't get over, you know, worried about that as long as you're kind of eating it from food yes, first. Yes, the body will sort it out. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A quart on your plate, quarter protein, yeah. quarter carbohydrates, and fill All it up colour. full of salad yes. and after that. Love it. Thank you very much, Sinead Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sinead. Yeah. The Galway players are all Carl, over Carl's it. Carl's always on the protein milks. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Well, always buy protein milk in the supermarket. If you want a bit extra But even from milk itself has is. high protein. It doesn't always oh, yeah. have to be a protein, protein milk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> milk. We're forgetting that. Yeah, exactly. Now, thank you so much. Coming up on tomorrow's show, musical genius Jules Holland will be joining them for a chat. Plus, uh, the Everything. country's favourite architect. Who could I be talking about? <laughs> I don't Dermot know. Bannon is going to be stopping by. Absolutely. How exciting is that? We're going to be having a hoot with some owls. <laughs> All that plus your usual news, sport and weather. So join Martin and Katya tomorrow from 7. Right, for from us, on, have man. a great bank holiday weekend. We'll see you I'll back here. Do you want to talk I'll, I'll have some in there first. We'll see you on I'll Tuesday. I'll get the protein in I'll here. get the protein. <laughs> <try, I> prefer <laughs> the milk. Really? I Would prefer you? the milk, yeah. I bet a peanut butter and a nice smoothie. That's going to be joining <laughs> me for the This will all be gone. As you can tell. Have a great Bye. weekend. Bye-bye. Oh, you took...